Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Kim's Scholarship and Journey. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the weakness and Jesus, Messiah and weakness. How can we understand Messiah, Jesus, in relation to the idea of weakness? Messiah and weakness. First of all, we need to think about the concept of weakness and its relation to Jesus. Was Jesus weak or did he simply identify with them? How did Jesus see God and the world? How can you explain Jesus' death in view of this lens of weakness? Can we see God and the world from the perspective of weakness? Can we also read the biblical characters through this lens of weakness? How should we see ourselves? All these sort of questions are very interesting and it's important to answer them one way or another. So I'm thinking about an alternative approach to weakness. Perhaps I argue that weakness can be a virtue. Be careful, I don't say all kinds of weaknesses autom automatically, you know, virtue, something good. I'm not saying that. If we understand weakness in a certain way, it can become a virtue. In that regard, you know, in some matters, we, we can think Jesus was also seen as weak in his life, in his ministry. In some sense, he was born with weakness. So we'll see later more about the Jesus' understanding and experience and even enactment of his witness in his ministry. So if we rightly understand the concept of witness in such a way, hopefully we can understand Jesus better because of this eye of witness. So first of all, let me uh, say to you uh, two very different images or kinds of uh, witness. One we can see in you know, Old Testament, uh, Genesis 2, uh, part 2 of creation story. As you know well, here in this creation 2, weakness is embedded in our, you know, creation. Weakness is part of the human condition because the Lord, right, formed Adam, taking the dust right from the ground so we are made out of the dust yet god breathed us into our nostrils right breath of life because of that breath of life adam became nefesh the first human being nefesh means a living being it is not dust anymore but is given with the breath of life so in this creation story, we can think that the fact that who we are can be understood both in terms of a weak and strong character. But in contrast, Stoicism, the dominant philosophy uh, coming from um, you know, Greece and uh, Roman times, Stoicism consider weakness very differently. It is just bad thing from one to 100, okay? Every way possible, weakness is just bad. It is reflected in gender ideology and hierarchical unity because women representing weaker, right, sex, male representing stronger sex. So the weak, must serve the strong. The philosophers and elite and the rulers have to rule the world. That kind of philosophy is coming from Stoicism. So with that kind of, a, you know, uh, identity of, of strength, uh, traditionally we thought about uh, four types of Jesus, traditional types of Jesus the Western Jesus, the Savior, right? So here, 
Jesus is savior of the world. So the Western Jesus is pretty much of a colonial concept of a savior who conquers the world, right, with the gospel, right? Or Jesus, the apocalyptic, apocalyptic prophet, apocalyptic prophet. And Jesus, the liberator, right? Strong Jesus, we can think here too. And the spirit-filled reformer, he also, we can think of the strong Jesus. But actually, we can think of a Jesus differently with the idea of weakness, right? So weakness may be broadly defined not only as just human conditions as such, but as a virtue that refers to solidarity, you know, mercy, and change of mind. All beings and non-beings in the world are weak and exist in weakness. Think about it. Weakness is embedded in humanity and part of who we are. We are not made strong from the beginning, right? We all born with something, you know, weakness, whether in character or physically. We are not born with the strength. We are unlike angels or robots. We are human beings, nefesh, living beings, born with the strong and weak character. So the eyes of weakness provide us with a new sense of a deep solidarity bounded by weakness. In other words, when we see other human beings, other people, right? We have to feel empty. We have to have a common sense that we are bounded by weakness. Usually the lens of weakness is not wanted by people because they want to identify with the strong. But actually that's a uh, kind of an illusion, right? We have to realize the weakness in our lives in the world. We have to see the weakness from other people too. So weakness can become the condition for who we are, right? So if we understand weakness correctly or rightly, it can be powerful in our human solidarity with others. So we can say we can be strong when we realize that we are weak. We have to acknowledge that we are weak and small. In this regard, weakness is virtue, can become a virtue that we must embrace in our lives. When we or others go through a harsh world that results in social ills, injustices, we cannot sit calm, right? We cannot just watch all ugly faces of evil or weakness in the world. This is the weakness that we must engage with and advocate for the weak people. Jesus was born and grew up with, grew up, grew up with many things relating to weakness kind of experience. Poverty stricken, poor country in Galilee, right? Miserable childhood life in Nazareth, and Roman Empire under Roman Empire, and chaotic leadership in Jerusalem and Rome and born with an unusual family and parents and with a single mom, right? You can imagine how Jesus lived all in this environment. He's believed to have a unique or distinct character of an introspective yet outspoken activist. Some sense, weakness was embedded in Jesus' life. He did not stop with that, you know, in badness. In his public ministry, he acted upon the weakness in his life, enactment of weakness by Jesus, okay? He told, by the way, a lot of parables, which we see the main theme of the kingdom of God, and also he's emphasizing the importance of a mercy, right? God's mercy and the importance of our mercy toward others. So we see even the lens of witness in his teaching in the parables. In his social activism, right? Certainly he worked for, you know, uh, healing of people, you know, he took sides with the, the oppressed, the marginalized people, social activism, also kind of evidence that he worked out because he had experiences with weakness. Healing and exorcism is obviously the evidence that he worked out with his weakness. 
So Jesus crucifixion and weakness. Think about this. The crucifixion is the ultimate form of his weakness, right? He could not overcome it. He knew how he could avoid that, but he did not avoid it. Why? Because he had to continue on his ministry, right? He knew that if we continue this ministry, he was going to die. He was going to be killed. In that regard, his crucifixion shows his risky love, risky love on the cross. To crucifixion otherwise is a bad thing. We cannot celebrate the crucifixion. It is a bad thing because it is done by the evil. If the message of Jesus was accepted, had been accepted by people, right? He could not have died on the cross. So the crucifixion is not the purpose of his life. It is unwanted tragedy. He risked all these things. He did not stop on his ministry because he knew that it is important to continue to testify to the truth of God. So Jesus suffering on the cross is a bad thing. It's not a thing that we can celebrate. It is a torture. So don't misunderstand that, okay? The cross is a good thing. Evil must be condemned. Those who are responsible for his death must be judged, right? That is the crucifixion. So the crucifixion has many faces, actually. Tragedy and uh, Jesus' love, you know, and justice issue. Those are responsible for his death are to be condemned. But in the end, God raises Jesus from the dead. We have to know it is God's business that God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus did not raise himself, right? So this is kind of a paradox we see uh, in the weakness of Jesus. So what I talked about uh, up to now is actually based in my book that I published in 2015, uh, the title, Messiah in Weakness, subtitled A Portrait of Jesus from the Perspective of the Dispossessed. In this book, I raise a perennial question about Jesus. How can we approach the historical Jesus? Kim proposes to interpret him from the perspective of the dispossessed through the eyes of witness. This is the lens that I'm reading the historical Jesus, right? I could find him better, clearer because of this lens of witness. Exploring Jesus' experience, interpretation, and enactment of weakness, understanding weakness as both human condition and virtue. I think both and this is really important, so don't misunderstand me, okay? Weakness as both human condition and virtue. I offer a new portrait of Jesus who is weak and strong. Again here, weak and strong, and empowered to bring God's rule, replete with mercy in the here and now arguing against the grain of a tradition that the strong Jesus identifies with the weak. I demonstrate that it is the weak Jesus who identifies with the weak. The weak Jesus who identifies with the weak. The paradoxical truth with Jesus is because he's weak, he's strong. This kind of echo of a Paul, right? Paul also said similar like this, okay? When I was weak, I became strong. That's interesting. In the end, Jesus dies a death of paradox that reveals both his ultimate weakness that demands divine justice and his unyielding spirit of love for the whole world and the truth of God. So this is the end of my presentation. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with another topic. Thank you. God bless you.